A very warm welcome to you. It's a pleasure as always to have you for company each week on this program. As you know, we are your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business. My name is Margaret Mary Busibor. You're welcome. On the line of this week, we begin by joining Faith and her guest, Mr. Jossi Sofori, the Ghanaian Commissioner for Insurance, for the continuation of their exclusive session on the Ghanaian insurance industry and sundry issues. Mr. Alfori said that insurance regulators across West Africa want what's best for the insurance industry, but appraisers themselves must be willing to cooperate. Do take a listen. Regulators can help, but it all depends on the individuals who manage our, I mean, the industry. Because the regulator wants the best for the industry, but if the players don't want what is good, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. We, we, insurance is a business. On this edition also, we'll bring you highlights of the 13th World Hackathon and Insure Tech Conference that took place recently at the Disitani Hotel Dubai UAE. Declaring the conference open to a packed audience of over 300 delegates from around the world, His Excellency Ibrahim Obaid Al Zabi, Director General, Insurance Authority, stressed on the need for optimizing Takafor's contributions to the economic growth of the region. Do take a listen. I am confident that the valuable discussions from our conference will cover many important and relevant pillars of what the Takafor sector is witnessing under the current global economic circumstances. Not forgetting, of course, all the other extras we bring you each week on this program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup. Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. Over time, well, before the issues of uh, race base, um, it, often time the, the narratives you hear is that, uh, oh, um, the insurance industry in developing countries, especially, I keep narrowing down to West Africa because they kind of have similar uh, problems and yeah. challenges. Um, they'll tell you, oh, they don't have adequate capital, especially when you talk about, um, when you talk about their involvement in the oil and gas or big ticket risk or the um, foreign companies will also often give the excuse that oh they don't have uh, local underwriters don't have adequate capital to carry this big ticket risk and all of that now risk-based supervision or regime will it take care of some of these issues of um, under capitalization or low capitalization as we hear yeah, uh, when it comes to risk base, uh, sometimes you don't, you're not so much worried about the minimum capital because um, you are going to actually, um, it's not going to be so much of a priority to you. Because when you say to you as, as a as regulator a company, or as a, as a company, company, yeah. Okay. Because you are actually checking out what his capital is and the risk that he's getting himself into. So someone can say, well, I have the minimum capital. But I'm not getting myself into, into high risk, so uh, I'm okay. I'll always be solvent. You get me? Uh, but when you're purely uh, uh, rule-based, then you're asking for a capital. So what we, for under risk-based, what we'll be looking at is the, your operations and making sure that you, at any given time, you will have, you'll be in a good position to handle the risk that you are taking. Um, when it comes to the comparison between the local and the foreign companies, yeah, definitely we don't have the, the, the enough capital in our systems. Um, I'm sure I'm in Nigeria with this. Of course. Oil, yeah, <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of uh, capital flights. Flights. Yeah. Um, because when you talk about, when you compare ourselves to the, uh, to the developed world, one company, the... Uh, their portfolio could be probably hundreds of maybe billions, billions of dollars, billions of, dollars of, of pounds. So truly they have, they have more money because the more money you have, the more risk you can take. They have a risk because you know you have a backbone. 
um, if you don't have much, it means you have to eat just a little. So small stomach, eat small. Big stomach, you can eat big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so, so that, 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 is, that, is, that is where the issue is. But on, the, on, on another note, insurance is about spreading the risk and also sharing the risk. So we share and we spread the risk. Yes, we don't have the capital base to actually absorb most of the businesses that we generate locally. Yeah. So some has to go. Now, if some leaves, it means that when there's a loss, we are going to share with those people who are taking more. But the unfair aspect is that they take our businesses and we don't get any businesses from them. Is that, yes, uh, you are saying unfair because that's it, often it, the word you hear from players here. Yeah. But what is unfair in it? They have bigger money yeah, they, and they, they are taking they, business yeah, yeah, from yeah, you because you don't have the capacity. So Yeah, we, we don't have the capacity, but it doesn't mean that we cannot bite small. <laughs> You, you got me. Okay. When we share the risk, we say, okay, if you take five million from here, and even bring us hundred thousand, <laughs> I mean, because we have, we are not big, then you are spreading the risk. Okay. You know, you are sharing with us so that if there's a claim, we also have to contribute. Okay. And sometimes we also gain experience from huh. doing other businesses. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know even in West Africa, there are businesses that move from Ghana to Nigeria, and there are businesses that move from Nigeria to Ghana, Ghana. Uh, because we all understand that. We have to share the risk. Some of the business that flew into Ghana could have been also kept in Nigeria. So there, I'm sure there will be some. But the insurers understand the principle that every risk has to be shared. And we spread it among so many people so that when there's a loss, we all contribute a little bit than taking off. Now, if we decide that, okay, the oil and gas that we have in Ghana, Ghana is going to take maybe 100%. Yeah, you take it, but one loss can wipe out the whole economy. Yeah. So you need to actually share the risk. And if you are sharing the risk, it means that you have to share the premium. Just that we have to build capacity. I believe that uh, we have to share risk, but we have to encourage our locals to, to generate income, to have a, a stronger backbone. So it means that we probably have to be getting ourselves into, a, I don't know, uh, some other investments or teaming up, forming a coalition so that we have, uh, we, we can actually spread risk. If you look at the Lloyd system in London, it's a group of syndicates. I mean, so many companies come together as the Lloyd's market, and any risk that comes is spread amongst the, the insurance companies that form part of the Lloyd's market. Market. Yeah. Okay, but that is a difficult find when it comes to our environment because of issues of. Unnecessary competition sometimes instead of cooperating because the law system you talked about is more of cooperation, seeing yeah. ourselves not as competitors yeah. but as corporate or cooperators yeah. in the market for the good of our business. But you don't you don't find that uh, balance here. So, um, wh what's your take on that? I think it's possible, but there's still a lot of the pie is so big, and it's always leaving Africa. So if we love ourselves and we say, you know what? Let's come together. Any loss, let's bring it on the market and we share. We still have a lot, a lot to let go. But I, I, I can't tell what the problem is. <laughs> be, be, because I think, I, think, I think it's solvable. It's not like the pie is too small and that one person can eat it all. There's still a lot of businesses in Africa. So why not make a set? If we have st stringent rules, for all the, the players of the market, then there'll be no fear. You take whatever you can, what we can't, we send it out. But sometimes we don't even give our brother, we send the rest we out. Send, we send the rest yeah. out. So, okay, is there, uh, in, it's still dwelling a little bit on yeah. that. Is there a role you think that regulators can play to overcome some of this, uh, some of this problem that we're saying? Yeah, regulators can help. But it all depends on the individuals who manage our, I mean, the, the industry. Because the regulator wants the best for the industry, but if the players don't want what is good, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. We, we, insurance is a business. If you meet a company that would actually take on a risk and when it comes to claims payment, has challenges paying a claim. Then another an, an insurer will decide not to give you, not even co-insure with you. So the business is all about relationship. And uh, if you have people who have 
who are not ready to have a relationship with their, their fellows, then you have this problem because there's a limit to what a regulator can do. But the re regulator cannot actually compel you to give your business to. Um, because we don't get, we, can't, we set out the rules. Maybe we say keep 90% of uh, any locally business uh, generated uh, business locally. But we cannot tell you to give it to company A or company B. Um, and we don't want to get involved because it's a business decision. You might, you might have had an experience with company A, and for that reason, you don't want to give them. Yeah. So that, at the end of the day, um, we ourselves, uh, we, have a, we have a challenge. The regulator can do its best, but I think uh, we as individuals, we have, a, we have a big task ahead of us. Okay, sir, let me take you back to um, the issues of the growth projections that I talked about. Um, some of the experts have said that some of the growth uh, projections they've made for the Ghana insurance market is premised on the fact that there will be a lot of um, activities in the oil and gas sector. And of course, the issue of um, the mandatory fire insurance for commercial buildings. Now, uh, that brings me, how is that going? That's the first part of the question. Then secondly, oftentimes you find that, um, especially in West Africa, mm -hmm. you find that compulsory insurances are there in the laws or implementation or enforcement has always been a major challenge because you don't find in some cases, Nigeria for example, government brings the law, so to speak, through the regulator for example, and they are the biggest buyer of insurance products and services and they are also the biggest no, debtors or those who are not willing to pay. So when it comes to the issue of enforcement of some of these compulsory insurances, how easy or how difficult has it been in, in the Ghana market? Yeah, um, it is easy and still not easy. The rules are very good, but I think it's all about implementation. Um, when I look at our act, uh, we have compulsory insurance, uh, compulsory insurance for commercial buildings in there, but it's sitting idle. So we've started, I mean, the enforcement has been there, but it depends on the degree. Uh, we believe that we have to uh, put more fire into uh, the enforcement mechanism and with a lot of public education. Okay. For the past uh, one month now, we started with continuous public education, advising the public that it is mandatory for them to have commercial insurance for their, for, for their commercial properties. properties. And we have started with a task force going out uh, checking on them. Okay, and when you say tax force, is it the tax force set up by the industry or government or police or...? Yeah, it's a tax force set, uh, set up by the commission. Okay. And we do this in collaboration with the uh, uh, fire, uh, fire service, service? Okay. and the police and then some industry players who, are, who also sometimes want to take advantage of the, of the tax force and uh, cashing because sometimes when people become aware that the composite insurance is, com uh, is a must, then they probably want to buy insurance right away. So uh, it's a teamwork. Okay. It's a teamwork. It's, it's not an easy work going on, the fo going on foot, moving from one premise to the other. but. That is the way forward. That is the way forward with a lot of public education. Okay. Yeah. What, the, what about the government? Are they also uh, keen into it by way of compliance? Oh, yeah. The, the government, that's why we go to the police and the, and the fire service. They're all uh, government employees uh, because the government wants insurance penetration to go high and uh, they want us to do whatever we can to make a lot of, uh, of our monies, I mean, cut down on the capital flight. So they are, they are very keen. Whatever we can do to actually increase insurance penetration, uh, we believe that they are on our, part, on our side. Okay, now, so let's talk about the uh, issue of um, awareness and penetration. Uh, oftentimes when you talk about insurance penetration on the continent of Africa, of course the league likes of South Africa, and some countries in East Africa play uh, big. But the narratives oftentimes is the same um, across West Africa. Lack of trust, lack of this, lack of that. Now, um, is there a role that the regulator can play uh, to uh, maybe eradicate some of these negative narrative that has plagued the insurance industry for so long? Yeah, um, the regulator has a lot of role, a big role to play. Okay. Um, to instill public confidence. 
and that can be done by being very strict and fair, open when it, when it deals with insurance companies that try to flout the law or try to um, uh, be difficult uh, to policyholders when it comes to claim make payment. Um, I think we also have a responsibility to create public awareness so that the population knows where to go should they have any challenge with the industry. So we do public sensitization with, uh, uh, every year throughout the regions. Um, normally we communicate or we contact trade associations like the transport unions and market women and then we educate them on the need to have insurance but and also where to go when they have a challenge with an insurance company okay. or when they have any uh, 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 mistrust or challenge and we have um, a complaint bureau okay. that deals with such issues for, from from third party insured and even staff anything related to insurance uh, complaint wise we have a bureau that deals with it in the commission Welcome back. Moving on now, we'll bring you highlights of the 13th World Tackle Fall and InsurTech Conference that took place recently in Dubai. The theme was differentiation, innovation and profitable growth. With Islamic finance assets expected to grow to $3.8 trillion by 2022, the sector remains a key focus area in line with Dubai's vision to be the world's capital of Islamic economy. Happy viewing. Middle East Global Advisors is a business information company that organizes industry conferences for banking, insurance, funds managers, capital markets, and project finance segments in the United Arab Emirates. Middle East Global Advisors in strategic partnership with the Dubai International Financial Center Authority, DIFC, and supported by the Insurance Authority, IA, recently put together the 13th World Tecafo Conference at the Dusit Tani Hotel, Dubai. The theme of the conference this year was differentiation, innovation, and profitable growth. Declaring the conference open, the Director General Insurance Authority, IA, His Excellency Ibrahim Obeid Al Zahbi, stated that the UAE has been in the forefront of insurance market in the Middle East and North Africa in the last 10 years. It is noteworthy here that the UAE has been at the front of insurance markets in the Arab countries and North Africa since 10 years in terms of gross, gross written premiums which may reach 44 billion dirhams in 2017 compared to 40 billion dirhams in 2016. The investments in the insurance sector according to the preliminary data increased to 61.5 billion dirhams in 2017 compared to 52.2 billion dirhams in 2016. Distinguished guests, data and indicators confirm the growing role of the capital sector uh, insurance in the uh, insurance industry in the UAE. The capital insurance contribution amounted about 10% of the gross written premiums in the market in 2017 compared to 9.4% with a value of 3.7 million billion dirhams in 2016. In his keynote address, the Chief Executive Officer of Dubai Islamic Economy Development Center, DIEDC, Abdullah Mohammed Al Awar, noted that the global takafu sector is estimated to grow up to $52 billion by 2020 with a 9% annual growth rate. The value of the insurance sector is projected to exceed $62 billion US dollars by 2020, according to the findings that emerged from the World Insurance Congress or the Dubai World Insurance Congress 2018. It is clear that the capital needs to occupy a larger space in the region and, uh, and the global insurance map. 
in order to determine how the support of the, uh, to support the growth of the Kafel, we need to answer, I think, several questions. How many local and international airline or transport firms are turning to Kafel to ensure their trips instead of the conventional? How many large institutions or conglomerates are using the Kafel and how many private or public sector entities are dealing with the Kafel companies to cover, for example, their employees? If the answer to most of these cases uh, uh, is, uh, is no or, or very few, uh, then the question, the natural question that I think arises is why? Why is that? The first session of the conference focused on leaders' perspectives, profitability and sustainable growth for the global Takafu industry. Speakers were Mr. Gotten Detta, Chief Executive Officer, National Takafu Company, PSC, Watania. Mr. Omar Goda, Managing Director, African Rick Takafu Company. Mr. Mustafa Uliya Vazil, Managing Director, Gadash Insurance. And Yaya Hadna Hamad, Chief Executive Officer, HSBC Takafu. Moderator was Mr. Sadar Jaffa, Managing Director and Consultancy Actuary Middle East Milima. Other speakers were Mr. Dave Makcham, Chief Executive Officer, the International Underwriting Association of London, who spoke on London, a market with an ideal framework and innovative approach to satisfy Islamic insurance needs. The fourth session of the conference focused on the next big opportunity in Takafu. Speakers were Shakib Abu Zaid Group, Chief Marketing Officer, Reinsurance. Group made reinsurance brokers, Mohammed Azamatullah Sharif, regional manager and head Takafu Munish Re Underwriting Agent, DIFC Limited, Hatim Maskawala, Managing Director, Badi Management Consultancy, and Ashraf Hal Azuni, Managing Director, RGA Reinsurance Company Middle East Limited. Moderator was John Guy, Secretary General, Islamic Insurance Association of London. All the sessions of the conference focused on topics such as disrupting distribution, embracing digitization to increase insurance penetration and drive business growth, differentiation leveraging Takafu USP to achieve true competitive advantage, the legal and regulatory challenges associated with Insotec, and Insotec game-changing technologies that are revolutionizing the Takafu industry. Speaking on the topic, Digital disruptors as drivers of growth for the insurance sector. Mr. Shadi Sahade, General Manager, Escadanian Software, said that insurers must redefine their roles in society. Insurance companies, we have a good chance to redefine our roles in society. People look at us as we are premium collectors and then they have to beg to get reimbursed for their claims when the other the, the accident happens. We have a chance to change this perspective and work with the society as a role, as a risk avoidance uh, rather than risk mitigation. We also share his thoughts on digital disruptors. Mr. Fadi Hidi, Chief Executive Officer, Takafu Emirates, said that if insurers want to be destructive, they must be ready to step back and ask why. If you want to be disruptive, you got to take a step back and say, no, I'm going to actually look at that and understand why it has been set up this way. If it's a regulatory concern, fine, no issues. Then we'll continue processing it that way. But you will find, at least my experience has been, and I'm not just talking about the government or outdoor insurance, I'm talking about banking, I'm talking about government, healthcare, you name it. 80% of processes that are broken are a result of people's misrepresentation or misunderstanding of business requirements, customer needs, and the like. There is no doubt that the Takafu sector holds enormous potential for growth. But just like conventional insurance, operators must be ready to embrace the change that is coming, that is, destructive technology, if they want to remain relevant in today's fast-paced business environment. And that is our time on the program this week, but the good news is it doesn't end there. We are live and we are social, so connect with us on all our social media platforms. 
You can like our page on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, don't forget that the April edition of our free Pigeon English newspaper, Waiting Insurance They Do Serve, is still out, so go get your copy. You can also join us live every Wednesday on Niger FM 102.7 by 9.45 a.m. and also on Odini Bo 99.1 FM every Thursday by 12.30 p.m. So tune in and also tell your folks to tune in. Until next week, I shall bring you a fresh package. My name is Margaret Mary Osiobor. From the entire crew, it's goodbye.